Students Who Thought They Broke is an educational series that created to provide brief educational content to all the members of the healthcare team within the ER. That's gonna include nurses, physicians, pharmacists, and all the other healthcare members such as respiratory therapy, our patient care techs, and all of those members that are participating. Due to the non-traditional working environment of the ER and the busy nature, most providers do not have time to attend lectures and seminars that are done during traditional hours. Therefore, the mission of Pharmacy Friday Pearls is to provide an opportunity to engage in intellectual conversations about acute care or related issues, and that's gonna be provided via email that contains a handout. You can also go to the website to view these when you're off shift. And again, we also have a component where we actually provide in services to the providers while they're on shift that usually takes anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds. All right, so now we have the Pharmacy Friday Pearls homepage. And then on the homepage, you can see a collection of background information that can be used to orient yourself to the website. Moving forward, if you click the left-hand corner, you can see the Pharmacy Friday Pearls handouts. And as you click on that, you will see a collection of all the topics that we have there. Once you select a topic, for example, ketamine for acute agitation, you're gonna click that and there's gonna be multiple aspects of this particular topic. There will be four sections, pre-test, pharmacology and review of evidence, related phone posts, and the post-test. For the pre-test, this can be used to assess prior pharmacology competency and a copy can be sent to the test taker for proof of completion. Moving forward to the next section, the pharmacology and review of evidence handout, once you click that, you will first have a downloadable link that can be saved to your personal computer. When you look at the handout, you have two sections, the pharmacology section and review of evidence section. For the pharmacology section, there's a brief overview of dose, adverse effects, and pertinent kinetics. And for the review of evidence, there will be a table that summarizes the most common and recent data related to the topic. Moving forward to the related phone post section, you will have a collection of related posts by other popular phone sites such as Rebel EM, MCRIT, and others for a more comprehensive review of the topic at hand. And lastly, we have the post-test section. This can be used as an assessment of pharmacology competency after the completion of the module, which can be used as an objective tool for credit for any institutional or any ACGME related competencies. The purpose of Pharmacy Friday Pro is to provide an overview of key topics in emergency medicine and critical care patient populations in a manner that is efficient for the busy healthcare practitioner. However, Pharmacy Friday Pro is not all inclusive and does not take the place of clinical judgment, guidelines, or other meetings of evidence based medicine. Pharmacy Friday Pearls was inspired by the lack of readily accessible acute care related topics from a pharmacy perspective in the curriculums of physicians, nurses, pharmacists, and other members of the healthcare team. And I want to connect these individuals to a reliable source of pharmacy information that can be accessed at all times. Pharmacy Friday Pearls was originally done as an in service to the physicians and nurses at Grady Health System and was subsequently sent out as an email. Currently, we have over 15 hospitals throughout the nation that are receiving the email from Pharmacy Friday Day Pearls. Uh, it's been extremely beneficial when teaching new residents and orientees about our medications and processes. It's such a great reference and easy to use and access online. Pharmacy Fridays is a natural extension of the indispensable role of the ED pharmacist in our clinical team. It actually fits really naturally into our clinical shifts where um, just within moments of the day we're able to learn new things. It gives us access to well-researched literature as well as reminds us of the biochemical and uh, pharmacologic properties of medications that we use frequently uh, but don't often remember or even in new medications that we are just becoming familiar with. What's great is that the residents really love it because it gives them a new clinical perspective from a part of the team that we don't often hear from. Um, it also creates an opportunity for these relationships within the clinical team that pay off when we are doing uh, critical patient resuscitation and trying to think of the next uh, step in therapy. What is also really helpful is that the written uh, component provides them an opportunity to go back and reference it in future clinical encounters where they can remember hearing about something 
but wanting to know exactly what the uh, specifics of a drug action or dose or recommendation are. So Pharmacy Friday here at Grady Hospital is very beneficial to us as residents. I feel it helps improve my skills as a clinician. Everything is evidence-based, backed up with the studies there, and we have easy access to it online. All the archives, um, lectures uh, through Pharmacy Friday, uh, which is very beneficial to us. So as residents, I feel it's very useful and great to have. So I'd like to thank you guys for the consideration of Pharmacy Friday Pros for SAM's Got Talent. I think it's something that can be beneficial for everyone, and I hope that you can visit the website at pharmacyfrothy.com and share this information with your team. Thank you, and have a great day. Hi, my name is Gerald Diaz, and I'm here to present Grep Med. Have you ever been to a talk or a conference and found a really high yield image that you wanted to save for later, so you take a picture of it? only to look for it later and find it buried under hundreds of food and vacation pictures? Have you ever had a very busy ER shift where you sit down to look something up quickly and are presented with something like this? Well, that's why we built GrepMed, an image-based medical reference database that leverages images and infographics to shortcut the information retrieval process. We're basically trying to get rid of all of the pocket cards and protocols that you have taped up on your walls. We realize that an image is worth a thousand words, and we want to make it easy to find algorithms, decision aids, checklists, differentials, guidelines, mnemonics, decision tools, and clinical images such as x-rays, EKGs, point of care ultrasound, and physical exam findings. So here's what we built. If you search for algorithm, for example, you'll find hundreds of algorithms. Here's one for anticoagulation in COVID. If you click here, this will bring you back to the source website of the image. You can find things like buprenorphine algorithms. Here's an example of bacteria algorithms for gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria classification. If you want to work up a rash, you've got algorithms for that. You can further narrow that down by fever and rash and find something like this. In a classic case in medicine, of course, is hyponatremia. So if you search for this on Wikipedia or Wikiem, you might find just one algorithm. But really, there's lots of different ways to think about hyponatremia. And if you find one that you really like, you can bookmark that algorithm and easily go back to it later. If you want to look up a topic, let's try aortic stenosis. Here you can find diagnostic criteria, as well as clinical parents on MRI, echocardiogram, and CT as well as general information about the diagnosis and management of the disease process. Now, if you're interested in checklists, we've got hundreds of checklists available for diagnosis and management. We've got supply checklists and intubation checklists, things like dump kits, pre and post extubation checklists, as well as COVID-19 specific checklists, which have become very popular. In terms of point of care ultrasound, we've got the largest online database of point of care ultrasound clips. You can search by organ system, such as lungs, and further narrow that down by pathology. Here's a great example of a pneumothorax, no lung sliding. We've got a very extensive echocardiogram library. You can narrow that down by apical four chamber. We can change the view now. Let's try short axis view. Here's an example of a D sign and a pretty scary septal wall rupture here. Now, one thing very unique to GrepMed is our physical exam database where you can find classic and also very rare physical exam findings that can be very hard to find at the bedside for learners. If you search, for example, for aortic regurgitation, Here's an example of Mueller sign, Lincoln sign, Corrigan sign, De Musset sign, and Quinky's pulse. If you're interested in meningitis, here's Koenig sign, Brzezinski sign, and of course, the very classic Hintz exam. 
So if you want to teach this to learners without using some sort of visualization, you'll find that their eyes will pretty much just glaze over, especially when you start talking about the head impulse test. So why contribute to GrepMed? Well, if you like to create infographics and you're interested in FOMED, we provide a platform that makes it easy for others to search, find, share, and bookmark your creations. If you're an up-and-comer in the FOMED space, sometimes Twitter and Instagram can be very frustrating because if you don't have thousands of followers, you might post something and you know just get a few dozen or a hundred image views and then it disappears. Versus if you post something to our platform, it remains evergreen and you can accumulate views if it's a useful image forever, basically. And we do that by leveraging Google and Google Images. So most of your friends and colleagues actually aren't on Twitter, but they do use Google. And we're the number one search result for lots of topics on Google. And so because of that, we've got many dozen images that have accumulated over a million views each. So some milestones, we have over 7,000 images in our database now with a growing number of point of care ultrasound and physical exam clips. We've crossed over 675,000 image views per day, which is more than double where we were six months ago. We're being used in countries all over the world by learners at all levels. And it's very important for us to remain free and open access because lots of countries in Africa, South America, and Asia, people just can't afford those very expensive subscription websites that cost hundreds of dollars per year. Here's a quick peek at our team. We're hoping to recruit more medical students and residents to join us in democratizing the medical information space. Finally, thank you so much for having us present here with these other great teams, and we'd appreciate any advice that you have to become a better resource. Thank you. Picture this. You're a first year attending working in your department's critical care pod. Your intern is preparing to intubate a crashing GI bleeder. You've got a Blakemore in one hand and a football helmet in the other. Out of the corner of your eye, you see the triage tech. You're the only attending I could find, he says, passing off four ECGs. If you work in Texas, you might call this an ECG stampede. And you better figure out how to deal with it before you get trampled. That's where we come in. The ability to quickly interpret ECGs is critical to every EM physician. Most departments have protocols for ECGs to be obtained and triaged for many common complaints, making ECG sign-offs, like I've just described, one of the most frequent interruptions for attendings. ECGstampede.com is the first product to combine education on ECG interpretation and simulation of on-shift triage. This website and app improves resident skill and confidence in ECG interpretation and triage before the resident is asked to perform the job and clinical practice as an attending. In the classic stampede mode on the website, the user moves through 10 ECGs one by one. The idea is that you're working in a busy emergency department with limited beds, so you can only bring two patients back to be roomed immediately, two can move to the top of the waiting room, and five must stay in the waiting room. One patient can be labeled as a STEMI. As you can see, some of the patients have a current and a prior ECG. And you can always zoom in if you want to get a closer look on any of the ECGs. As you move through the ECGs, the labels are used up. Just as in real life, you can't go back to change what you've picked. At the end of the exercise, we see the results page with the correct interpretation of each ECG, a way to review that ECG, and a feedback button that automatically sends an email back to us with your thoughts on that ECG's interpretation. In the app for Apple or Android, we can play the standard stampede mode, but also the quiz mode to see answers as we move along, or the random mode that lacks required bed assignment numbers. We'll start in quiz mode by selecting the number of ECGs we'd like to work on. Here in the vertical view, we can scroll from side to side to see the ECG, or click on it to get a wider view. Turning our phone sideways will give us the horizontal view, and we can zoom in as well to get a closer look. We can also answer questions in this horizontal view. You'll notice when we answer this question that the answer immediately pops up because this one is in quiz mode. Let's take a look at random mode. 
Here we select the number of ECGs again, and you'll notice the answer selections don't have numbers next to them because there's no required bed assignment numbers here in random mode. Moving back to the website, let's check out the curriculum. This is a 10-part video series with accompanying student and instructor guides. Instructors can sign up for access on this form or through a form on any of the individual units. The access is free and a password will be sent to the instructor for use after sign up. These side buttons allow the user to download all of the student guides or all of the instructor guides at once. They can also download individual guides through that specific unit. The 10 units cover an intro to ECGs, fascicular blocks, ischemia, syncope, bradyarrhythmias, tachyarrhythmias, and paste rhythms. Everything a student will encounter during a stampede game. The videos range from 12 to 36 minutes long, with the majority being in the 15 to 20 minute range. If you're looking for a particular topic, you can click the grouping up here to see the related units. Let's check out Unit 7. Here we can see the unit's video, as well as where we can download that unit's student guide. On the student guide, it's a series of ECGs that have a place for the interpretation and related questions for that ECG. Back on the unit, we see a tab for the instructor guide where we can download that as well. The instructor guide mirrors the student guide in that it has the same ECGs with their interpretations filled out as well as their related questions answered. Again, we see the form to sign up for instructor access and references for that unit. The last thing on the curriculum is the feedback form. This sends an email directly to the website's creators with any feedback that you might find while going through the curriculum. Finally on the website is the ECG conference. For those who have finished the curriculum or want to do some additional distance learning, these videos share and explain interesting ECGs. We've published five so far and announced the releases on our website and our Twitter page. And now for the numbers. Since our launch in November 2018, we've had over 14,000 users visit our website and 135 instructor signups on our curriculum. Our app has seen over 6,000 downloads and 98,000 quizzes have been performed. We've seen a recent increase in users as we continue to improve and refine our product. Thank you so much for listening. We're so excited to share our foam innovation with you. Hey guys, Corlin Jewell here from the University of Wisconsin, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about my FOMED project. Um, so what is the uh, 52 Articles in 52 Weeks project? Well, originally it's actually a reading list that uh, Michelle Lynn and the Academic Life and Emergency Medicine uh, or ALEM team uh, put together in 2016. Um, and basically it was a foundational series of 52 articles that they felt were very important to the practice of emergency medicine to give uh, folks a jump start on uh, getting down the literature in our specialty. And so one of the things that I always struggled with as a junior learner was, you know, I would be able to read these summaries and stuff and they would talk about these articles and would say like, oh, this is a good article and here's the summary of it and really kind of focus on the results in the discussion. And, you know, I would always be like, well, how did they come to that conclusion? Like, how do they know that this is good research? How do they know this is bad research? Um, and whenever I would, you know, read scattered articles here and there um, for like journal clubs, stuff like that, I would be like, well, you know, I wish I could uh, appraise this a little bit better. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And so I explained that to one of my mentors and then he directed me to that uh, Alium blog post and the gear started turning and I was like, oh, this is something that I could, you know, send out to the residents and uh, make sure that uh, they all kind of learned along with me. 
And then that, that year, you know, I would just send it out to them and it was tough to keep up with. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, impetus to really keep going, making sure I was reading the articles, making sure they were reading the articles. And I know a lot of people had a tough time complying with it. And so the next year I was like, how can I do this better? And what I came up with is, you know, people may not want to read all these articles in depth, but I want them to be able to understand, you know, like the methods and stuff like that. And since podcasting had become such a, you know, a popular way of uh, disseminating medical information, I figured I could start a podcast. I had never done anything like that before. And so it was kind of a learning process. But what I would do is I would take these articles and um, I would, you know, read them in depth, uh, create a summary um, of all the sections, uh, particularly like the method section, which is always, you know, the toughest to decipher if you're not used to reading medical literature. And I would record myself, you know, talking about the, the, um, the article in whole and then adding, you know, some pointers and my own thoughts to it. And I noticed that as, you know, time was going on that... Uh, I was able to, you know, really be able to appraise the literature and kind of fill my own personal gap in knowledge. And uh, based on the response I've gotten from the residents and everything, people have also kind of been learning along with me. And so the faculty actually asked early on in the project, um, the second year after I started recording, that uh, I'd send it out to the entire department and uh, go ahead and kind of share my screen here. What has been really, really cool about this is that um, you know, the faculty are able to get involved with this, send in their own thoughts on this, send in any other articles that they think are cool. And, you know, it's been kind of neat to have this discussion of, oh, I really like this, you know, particular piece. Uh, you know, here's some more evidence that supports it. You know, how can we use this in our clinical practice? Um, and it, kind of cataloging these responses and sending it out to the entire group as well. Um, the early version of the podcast was actually on Zencaster, uh, which didn't allow any editing in the free version. Um, and I just used my uh, departmental laptop's built-in mic. But thankfully, after you know sticking with the program for a little bit, I felt like I could invest some money in it and uh, picked up some more kind of advanced hardware that you see there. And so I really think that the quality is super ramped up as uh, my own kind of skills at appraising the literature have also done the same. Um, I started posting things on SoundCloud, um, which you can see here. And then finally, what does the future hold for the 52 Articles of 52 Weeks project? Well, I'm very excited to kind of officially announce that Lit EM is going to be the, the new brand um, that the uh, 52 Articles 52 Weeks project is going to become. Um, as you can see here, um, you can see the latest episode. You can see all of the episodes here, you know, clicking on one of these. I just recently did Crash 2, which was week 42. Um, you can see that you have a link to my SoundCloud there, my own thoughts on the article, and then some comments. Uh, you can uh, get started on the conversation as well. I um, have my contact information here, including my awesome departmental website uh, photo here. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that one. Um, but you know, what does the future hold after the 52 articles is done? Cause I'm already on week 42 and, you know, I really think that I start moving into deep dive literature searches on particular topics, as well as continuing to give newer articles or other articles I find important, the 52 articles and 52 weeks treatment. So like crash two is week 42. I'd be very excited to take on, you know, uh, crash three, um, which is, uh, kind of lately stirred up some, some discussion. So overall, you know, I think it's really kind of accomplished its original mission to become to make not only myself more familiar with literature, but also the people um, within the department. And uh, I'm really excited to uh, be a part of this SAEM's Got Talent. So thank you so much, guys. And if you've been following along with the project, you know, I always end all my segments with uh, happy listening. 